All right, folks, welcome back. This is our review for Thursday, September 30th, 2021. Just as a quick bit of housekeeping, uh, we will be splitting three user groups tomorrow and consolidating two other user groups. So pay attention to where you're going to be looking at finding your October So be mindful where the new October thread will be. So the way you would do that is just click on latest topics. So that way it'll it'll pop up for you where your access is going to be found. Not every user group is going to be affected tomorrow. But just as a heads up, just pay particular attention because you may need to look differently. Because you may need to look in a different location to find the October 2021 thread. All right. All right, so we have the dollar index. This is our daily chart here. I'll go through this as smoothly and quickly as I possibly can today. We had a little bit of a retracement back down in this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So we went just a little bit higher than the previous day's high, and we're still looking for a run to this high and above. Okay, this rejection block, have that on your chart as well. But I'm thinking we're probably going to punch through this, if not tomorrow, uh, sometime into next week. Hourly chart, dollar index. Again, you can see we retraced. And if you look right in here, our buy side imbalance, outside side inefficiency, we dipped into that, left a little bit open. I like that. So we want to see if it wants to continue higher. I don't look at this as a topping formation. I don't see this as a reason to expect bearish diversions and therefore a reversal. Uh, we're looking for continuation on the dollar on the upside. Dollar index on the 15 minute time frame. Again, much like we saw on the hourly chart, but just in a more refined fashion, we have a imbalance that's here. We trade down into that overshot consequent encouragement that's fine but we like to see a small portion of the imbalance left open remember it's not always the better scenario for it to completely rebalance and imbalance okay so uh, that's what differentiates me from the likes of say chris lori uh, chris lori they like to see it completely close that in rebalance that or something to that effect uh, i don't like to see that i like to see it leave a little portion open and if the algorithm does that that acts as a gap okay either in the form of a breakaway a measuring gap so we're again we're looking for higher prices i don't want to see it trade back below here okay not because it would fill in this imbalance but because we've already cleaned up the sell side below these lows here so notice what we've done we went above that short-term high consolidated, rallied once more, took out short-term buy-side liquidity, then took out sell-side liquidity after buy-side's taken. So we're consolidating. Breakout artists want to be a buyer once it breaks above this high. They reverted back to the sell-side, took those stops out. Anyone that was long on the breakout here or in this running up, chasing it, they're stopped out. They're afraid to go long now. So in my mind, I'm thinking they cleaned up the liquidity below on the sell side after taking the longs into the market. So they induced new longs by running this out here, engineering liquidity, more sell stops down here. For those that want to buy on the breakout above here, their stops going to be below here. So it created a lot of liquidity there. Why would they want to do that? And my thinking is they let these guys think they were getting a tiger by the tail and a runner. And then they took it back down, took out their stops and what was already in the marketplace. So this is engineering liquidity. And this larger pool of sell side liquidity floods the market for really good buying at discounts. And that's what the algorithm usually does. Now, if we go back below this, that unwinds that whole narrative and puts the near-term bullishness on the back burner. But my interpretation of what we're seeing here is as I'm describing, it looks bullish. 
euro dollar daily chart. You can see again, we've had continuation lower, much, much nicer price delivery than we've been seeing in recent weeks and months. Right on schedule, September, we're going into October. These months are a lot more liquid and it's a lot easier to see the setups and where it's likely to go. Imbalance, as I mentioned in yesterday's recording, this is where we're likely to see it draw down into. Hourly chart, euro dollar. The old low, we worked into that. A small little fair value gap there. Traded up into it and released. Imbalance in here with a bearish order block. One, two, three times hammering it and then trades one more time below the short term low. And on the 15 minute time frame, again, you can see that it's reverting back to that old low the imbalance, the hourly bearish order block, and imbalance that it trades up into here, and then trades to where the short term sells out liquidity is there. Just keep your focus down here. Uh, if it doesn't get to 115.07, obviously start paying attention to the institutional levels. We've already worked essentially the 80 level. So mid figure 115.50, have that on your chart, and 115.20. So if it fails to get down here, it might get to like 20 and do some kind of a short-term rally to, to upset anyone that was already short and then make a run later on into this and into the imbalance that's a little lower than 115.07. Just a scenario that's in my mind doesn't mean it has to pay out that way. It could just, just as easily just cascade lower and not even have any kind of slowing at all. But I'm not bullish on Euro. Pound dollar daily chart traded back up into this sell side and bounce almost completely back up to this old low again we like to see that little portion left open so if you start to trade lower which I think we will or at least I think we should <laughs> say it that way I don't want to speak in too much uh, certainty because anything can happen but I think we'll trade lower. Look at that 133.50, you know, this mid figure here. I think that's likely for by Sunday, Monday trading. And then if it accelerates, you know, over time, this is where I said we would likely see a trade to. A lot of things going on over in the UK. Uh, doesn't look optimistic for their economy and it may speed things up for a very deep discounted market on their currency. Pound dollar hourly chart. Bearish order block from yesterday. In balance. Trades back up into it. This looks bearish to me. We have a nice pool of liquidity below here. So be mindful of that. It's also essentially that 134.20 level we reacted to. So now it should cascade lower. Remember, if it trades through the 134 big figure, protocol is it can go as much as 40 pips below that reaching for liquidity so that would put us at 133.60 in that vicinity in 15 minute time frame again short term high breaks imbalance trades up into it here Looks like a market maker sell model. Consolidation, leads consolidation, comes back. Accumulation, reaccumulation, smart money reversal. Well, this right here doesn't give me anything in here yet that would be a short. Uh, I could use this high here if it traded up into that. That would be enough for me, not requiring it to go up to any kind of a breaker type thing. Uh, that would be enough for me to get short and look for this trend line here and go after this trend line that may be luring folks in and attack the liquidity below here. That's how I would interpret that. So that's something to watch to see if you get anything on that. All right, so I gave you homework with the crude oil market. Okay, this is the crude oil futures market. And again, I don't have the symbol here, but it's CL, Z is in zipper, 2021 in trading view, and you'll get this chart here. And the focus was this low to this high. So I've been showing you 
essentially positioned to swing trades in these examples. We're going to start working towards you know, short term and intraday examples next week just to you know spice things up a little bit. But I do want to kind of cater to the crowd in here that thinks like these types of trades because I don't dish these out a whole lot. But the tools and the obvious procedures are in the core content and in the lessons. So we'll obviously use these to help solidify that foundation. So if you haven't already went through your charts between these two turning points here, don't watch the rest of the video. Otherwise, you're going to steal the opportunity for you to learn and compare and contrast what you've learned so far in the mentorship. All right, before we get into it, obviously, we've been trained here to look at the breakdown of all the delivery months. And so if you go to barchart.com and pull up crude oil, the cash market is always the first one at the top of the list. Then it's the nearby contract and then the next month out. So we're looking at December. And while this here is essentially about a month ago, that still doesn't take away what was already in effect, which is this market is in a commercial bull market. It is a premium driven market. It's not a carrying charge market where if you look at the prices here and see, look at the last, the November contract, which I wouldn't be in that, I'd be in December anyway, but the, even though it does have the higher interest or open interest rather, I'd still be in December just because it's a market that's bullish. Why get into a month that's gonna expire and need to roll over into the next month before not too long. So it's just one of those things that it, in futures, you have to compete with the expiration because these contracts do expire. But without getting into another <laughs> long-winded rabbit trail, notice this price here on the November contract. It's 75.09. Then the next month is 74.75. Then the next month is 74.23. Notice it's going down. It's descending as we go out in the future. That is a reversal of a normal market or what is called a carrying charge market, which is it's cheaper on a nearby contract and more expensive in the future. Okay, that's the normal carrying charge market. When this reverses and you have the backwardization of now it's more expensive now and cheaper into the future, it, it shows a real underlying demand. And I've said this before in the past, um, you know, the whole notion of supply and demand as a trading approach or something to that effect, uh, there really is no supply and demand factors for like crypto. Uh, there is no supply and demand factors for currency. There are real supply and demand factors with real markets like oil, gold, grains, food, meats, because they are a limited supply. They're absolutely a limited supply. And you might argue, for those of you that are crypto folks in here, yeah, but so is Bitcoin. There's only so many Bitcoin. Yeah, but you know that Bitcoin could be broken down into pieces and smaller pieces to trade. You can't really do that with crude oil. You got to trade it in its contract specs, okay? Um, and it's really a limited supply. Well, I guess that's really not the best way of saying it. There's a limited supply when they want us to have a limited supply. If OPEC just dials it back, says, nah, we're not going to pump more oil, then there's going to be a higher demand, shorter supply, albeit controlled and manipulated, but it is a finite limitation on how much is going to the market. Much like wheat. You can't make more wheat than the crop produces. Uh, gold... You know, who knows how much gold it really is? You know, I don't know. But obviously it's finite. It's not infinite. So these markets, when we're talking about commodities, the effect of this backwardization of the nearby contract becoming more expensive versus the next month or the further out in the future months, 
that indicates real commercial interest. That means that commercials or large institutional users, like for instance, if we're looking at, um, say this was Coca, Hershey, Cadbury, you know, Nestle, they would be a commercial user for Coca because they produce chocolate. Well, producer, large producers and users of crude oil, and for the for the life of me, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head <laughs> that would be a commercial user. And I'm going to feel silly later on once I close the video out because I have a dozen. I'm going to list off of right now. I can't think of any. Uh, they are willing to pay a higher price right now because the demand is real because OPEC has not been producing as much because they're trying to offset what took place in 2020 where crude oil went below zero and they had to pay people to come get their oil because they can't just turn the pumps off. So this here is fundamentally bullish. So right away, this market is bullish. It's fundamentally driven by a commercial bull market. And while this is a nice rally, these conditions over here can create vertical runs where it's like violently one-sided and they're real fun to be a part of if you're on the right side. But if you're not, it's terrifying because usually limit up days beget limit up days. So you get stuck in the marketplace, either profiting or losing the maximum amount of movement in one day. Now, I'm not saying that's what's occurred here, but in these conditions, this market is absolutely primed for something like that. Now, think about what's going on over in the UK. Oh, see? Now, some of you in here complain and say, I don't want to hear about these tinfoil hat conversations. They don't mean anything to me. I'm in another part of the world. I don't care what the Brits got to deal with. I got gas where I'm at. These manipulations have an effect on these markets. So it's wise, prudent, worth your time and trouble and interest in learning what's going on in other parts of the world. So the UK is going to use a considerable amount of oil. They're going to use a considerable amount of fuel. They're not a small nation. They're not, you know, some impoverished nation. They're a society that uses machinery. Okay. So when we have factors like what we see going on over there, as it relates to their petrol, I had to force myself to say that and see that <laughs> we just call it gas. But over there, they call it petrol. Uh, that whole business over there is also being tweaked by this whole environment here. So this is one recipe here, or one ingredient to a blue ribbon recipe for stellar upside movement in a market that has this signature here. Okay, This is a commercial bull market. It makes it easy for the market to go up. And when it does go up, it likes to go up a lot. The second thing is the hedging program that I teach you using the commitment of traders chart. So you can pull up the December contract, click on interactive chart, which will be over here to the left somewhere. If you're looking at this screen on barchart.com, I know some of you just want me to literally do it for you. I'm trying not to do that because you have to do this on your own folks. Okay. And I get really irritated and angry. I'm going to be honest with you when I have members that just joined and they want me to walk them through every single step when I've already shown you how to find this information. It's a free service on barchart.com. Every single time I access the commitment traders chart, it's the same way all the time. It's not different. I'm not changing it. I'm not trying to make it an Olympic feat for you to be able to find it. Okay, it's very easy. But you have to get into the procedure of doing these things on your own. Do not fall victim to relying on me doing all the legwork for you. I'm not going to do that because that creates lazy traders and lazy students. I don't permit that here. So you're going to get this December contract. Again, this is what you would pull up or click on through barchart.com. And once you pull up the interactive chart, you go into plus studies, which will be somewhere up here on the chart. And you scroll down to commitment of traders and then only highlight the commercials. And I get a screen capture of it after I draw up or drag rather this window that creates the indicator overlay of commitment traders 
I drag it up so it makes it a little bit bigger and taller. So that way you can see all the ebbs and flow. And essentially I went back a year. So here's September of 20 and September 2021. This much data, I'm, I'm getting the range from the high to the low ahead of that August time period right in here. Okay. So the range was from here to here. And I pull a fib on that that you can do in this chart on the interactive chart, only highlighting the 50% level. Then I put a horizontal line across it and then I screen capture that. Then I drop it in MS Paint and I use the little color bucket and I color in all the red here that's below the zero line that I create by getting a range from the high and the low on the fib. And this is explained and taught in the mentorship core content. If you have not got to that lesson yet or if you watched it and you weren't really paying attention, then you need to go back into that content in that lesson and learn it, okay? Because I'm not going to do it every single time here. But this is me creating the color aspect above and below the zero line that I create, which is the hedging program approach that I teach you here. You can't get that anywhere else. So the way I discern the commercial activity, they were bullish in here. Did they buy? Yes. All through here, they were selling until we got to this little area here. It's a little nodule that went above the zero line. But all of this was occurring during essentially a flat period. So commercial producers were heavy sellers in the marketplace there. That's why it shows this. Now, this can occur while the market still goes higher because they're flooding the market, locking in sales at high prices. That's all that this indicates. But then when we get into here, look what's going on. We're getting into an area when we went above last year's highs on the commercials. But if you look at the commitment traders on a standardized perspective where it's just commercials versus large speculators and then use the zero line, the large traders are heavy net long and the commercials are consistently net short. You don't see this back and forth. It's just straight below it. Okay, and you you get confused if you look at it that way. And that's what made me frustrated when I learned from Larry Williams because I saw where he could show me on a chart, much like it shows here. But when I went into it and used the chart, it like silver for a long time stayed below the zero line. So I figured, well, the market's never gonna go up. <laughs> the commercials are selling it constantly. But what that's really saying is, like it's showing here, it just means that they're doing a lot of selling to the marketplace in an underlyingly bullish market that can still do nothing in terms of keeping the market down. But we're consolidating in an already bullish market. So they're selling because they have to they have to make money. Okay. They're not going to wait months, even though it may be bullish, they have to get rid of the oil. These wells are being active, they're pumping. So they have to do what with the oil? They gotta put it into the marketplace. And you see that really being illustrated here. Until we get to this point here, in the beginning of August, they go to net long based on my interpretation of commitment traders, not the standardized way of doing it, not the way Larry Williams teaches it or anybody else uses it in their technical analysis. This gives you the x-ray view of, okay, now they're really ramping up their hedging program. They're really buying, even though this is still below the zero line from a traditional stance, like if you put the um, large traders and commercials on the, the graph, you know, if you don't toggle the little eyeball and you know, you'll know what I'm talking about if you pull up the, the commitment traders on barchart.com. And I can hear the people hissing that are new. Can you just do it? I don't understand. No, go into barchart.com and play around with it. You gotta get familiar with it, folks. And I've done enough lessons in this core content, even in the commentaries. If you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing and not just zipping through and paying for months too fast and not really digesting the information, you'll know how to do these things. But anyway, the point is we're having that long here and we have a low, that's this low here. And then have this low here, which is that low there. Okay, so with those things in mind, heavy net long position in a commercial bull market, sell side liquidity is taken. We return back to a bullish order block, closing in a volume imbalance as well. And we have buy side liquidity here. So the market drops down, takes out sell side liquidity, 
Why does it want to do that? It offers smart money to accumulate all the cells that are resting below here, all the selling, sell stops, all the sell side liquidity, anybody that wants to sell short on a breakout, anybody that has a trailed stop loss on longs from back here, they're getting knocked out of the market there. So this is flooding the market with sellers. That's perfect for large traders like the commercials. They're going to accumulate those stops. That's what you saw reflected on the hedging program on that commitment traders chart, where it went big time green, higher than it was last year at the same time. That right there is a huge buying opportunity. And then the standardized run for the opposite or opposing liquidity, which is the buy side liquidity above here. So being a buyer around that $62 a barrel, looking for a run to at least $73 a barrel, that's $11 or $11,000 per contract for oil. But obviously it went a little bit higher than that. On a four hour chart, you can see how we traded down again into that bullish order block and below the old low. Accumulates all the sell stops, then rallies up. We have a low, high, lower low. I'm looking at the overall price swing. Yes, there's smaller price swings that are inside this swing, but this still doesn't change the fact that high, low, lower low, that's a bullish breaker. We accumulate inside that bullish breaker. And notice what's occurring also. We have a low, they take out those stops. Does it rally? Yes, it does. We have a low, does it take out those stops? Yes. Does it rally after it does it? Yes. We have this low, it drops down below it. Does it take the stops? Yes. Does it rally afterwards? Yes. These are signatures of accumulation. All of these are indicating that when the market takes the stops below the old lows, it rallies. That's how you can discern accumulation in an underlyingly bullish market. The market rallies, we fall short of getting above that old high where the buy side liquidity is. It creates another small little pool of relative equal highs and buy side liquidity. It drops down one more time, takes liquidity out, anticipate what? A rally. Rallies up, finds some support at the old highs and expands further up into the $76 a barrel. One hour chart, everything I just said, then I'm showing you in the perspective of the hourly here. Not that it's necessary because it's just as clean on the four hour chart. And I don't really like to go down in like commodity markets less than an hourly chart. I think I've said this before when we're talking about the grain markets. And you can obviously have lower time frame charts with all of your annotations, but I think I've done enough here to show that there is obviously bullishness in the things that we look for and I teach you in the core content are all exhibited here in this price action. And the latter stages of that run is here. Taking their stops, rallying the consolidation below the buy side liquidity, drops down, takes the stops, relative equal lows, see them? Hits it, what would you anticipate then? Well, it's bullish, right? Did we take the buy side? Not yet. So if it's going below here, it's going down to pick up sell stops for buy side liquidity to be paired with. So you're buying sell stops, in other words, or a turtle soup buy. Rallies up, then takes the liquidity out. And you can see just a really nice stunner on the upside for crude oil. $14,000 per contract. Not bad. Which brings us to the close of this video and your homework assignment for tonight. We're going to be looking at gold. Okay, I want you to go into your daily chart. XAU, USD, Forex.com. That's your symbol. I don't have it over here. I apologize. So the homework is we're looking at this high down to that low. What was the framework for all of that there? Okay, and that's going to be it for today. Until I talk to you tomorrow. Be safe.